Good morning, everybody. My name is Bob McGoy. I am your host for this morning and would like to welcome you to the fourth day of the Design Innovation Month here from Computer Aided Technology. This is the seventh of 40 unique webcasts that we will be doing for you and all of our customer base. You can get to these later after we're done. We're recording these today. With that being said, and this is the second time I've said this intro because I muted myself the first time, Emily. Thanks, Bob, for the introduction. Um, like you said, today I'm going to talk with you guys about Copy Tree, going through some tips and tricks so you can really maximize the tool. So just to go over Copy Tree and really some things about Copy Tree, um, if you haven't used it, you can see right here to access it, you can go to your tools drop down and you've got Copy Tree. I'm also going to talk a little bit later about Move Tree. Um, they both have a very similar uh, format to Pack and Go, if you've used Pack and Go, which I know many of you probably have, but it's really made for the vault. Um, why is it made for the vault? It's because it allows you to easily reuse designs while maintaining the references within the vault. Um, you can also pick and choose the components you want to copy, which reduces how many multiple duplicates you make. Um, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of people that previously um, had all their files stored on a network location, Pack and Go was the only option, and you would have to make continuous duplicates of files when really it was the same as the one before. Also, with Copy Tree, you can include your drawings in the copy, further reducing your duplicate work. Again, um, this is even better than save as. Your drawings will reference the new part instead of referencing the old part, where you have to kind of trick SolidWorks into looking at that new reference. So getting into a little bit more about the details and interface of Copy Tree, this is the overall view that you can see right here. Um, we're going to go through as well when I start talking about some of these uh, specific features, we'll switch over to uh, kind of a demo to show you those in person as well. Um, just looking at section one right up here, you have your default destination and settings. The default destination gives you the ability to set a default folder. So if you're sending all of the new files that you are copying, and you can see right here they're checked off to be copied, you can just have them all go to a specific folder um, without having to go in here and renaming all of the folder paths for every single item. There's also some additional settings, like I said, up here, where you can choose whether you want to use the latest or the referenced file version. Um, normally, if you want to do just the files, or if you want to use this even as the pack and go, you can have them compressed to a zip outside of the vault. And then included in your options, you can even include reference drawings, such as simula simulations, drawings. Um, you can choose to name your drawings that you're copying after the models and preserve relative paths, uh, which really means if it's got a more complicated folder structure, it can help maintain that folder structure as well. You can also regenerate serial numbers in the cards, um, again, letting you use these PDM features um, while using the copy tree. Um, section two, transform options. If you look over here, you have a lot of different transformation options for naming your files. You can add a prefix or a suffix um, if you'd like to add something on the beginning or end of the file. You can use a serial number to rename the file. Um, if you're using serial numbers to pull part numbers um, within PDM, you can do uh, find and replace. So you can find a value that is in one of the file names and replace it with another value. Um, with section three up here, you get some additional details with um, the ability to filter based on different values such as, you know, maybe warnings, dates, file types, um, anything to really help you um, limit how many files that you need to look at 
as you can see right here, you can see every reference file. And when you start getting into bigger um, assembly, that can get more overwhelming. Also with these warnings over here, it's gonna tell you if there's any warnings that you should be aware of. Um, if they're yield, they'll still let you do the copy. If there's stop signs that you have to resolve before going on, this copy will be grayed out and then you just have to resolve those first. Um, in section four, you've got your main file tree. In here is where you designate exactly the files you'd like to copy. So in this print, uh, screen share, I'm copying all the files, but when using copy tree, really you can copy just the assembly, the assembly and drawing, just some of the components, and copy tree is going to maintain all those references. Over here is where you designate what you want your folder path to be. And also it'll show what the ultimate target file name is of the new file. Down here is an additional option really uh, specific to copy tree and um, not pack and go. You've got the ability to check a file in when you perform the copy. So if you're looking to create this and add it directly into the vault, you can select the check-in as copy and just have it automatically do that for you. Now, going on to some of those special features that we looked at in the interface, uh, first then, one of my favorite is checking in on copy. Um, again, it gives you the ability to automatically check in all the files being copied right away. And what I really like is you can use it to help you track your history, including a comment such as, this was copied from assembly 012-1156. So if you look at the history of this file, you can tell what base model it came from, um, giving you that link of history back to that original file that you used. Switching over just to look at this, I'm gonna pull up the copy tree tool. And first I have to select my assembly and then I'm gonna select copy tree. And so that pulls up and you can see if I select or deselect, I've got the ability to add a comment in here. So as we go through this, I'm just going to put in some of these comments. And you can see it's very easy. Um, and I can choose again to copy all of these files or just select specific ones. So in this case, I'm just gonna copy some of them. And you can see I can select all and deselect those and then keep the ones that I've got checked as ones that I want to copy. An additional feature like I was talking about with the transform options. You've got the ability to um, add prefixes or suffixes. Um, for these, these can be very useful. Um, initially, if you'd like to rename files with your initials, maybe you are doing concept work or you just want to test using copy tree without um, adding kind of garbage files into your vault. That's a very easy way to identify those files by adding a prefix or suffix. Um, another example may be if you've got customer specific um, model that you want to create, but it's based off a standard model. You can add a prefix or suffix to give it a unique name for that specific customer order. Just realize when you are making a selection to files, you want to select either to apply them to all or the selected files. So if you're only selecting one and you really want them all, just make sure you check off that apply to all to transform that. Down here you can see that you also have the find and replace with. For me, this is bit, um, can be useful if you want to find a specific value and replace it with another. Maybe the original file starts with 01 dash to represent a specific product line or category. And the new product line should start with 02 dash you can easily replace and find with that function. So again, pulling that back up, 
In this example, I'm going to add a prefix. And I want to add it to all my files. You can see it's going to highlight it yellow so that it shows you that you have now renamed it and you have a unique file name for this file. Again, you can also do a find and replace. And have it go through and rename those um, when they're selected. So going back, an additional option that you have is you can use your serial number um, in PDM and generate it to rename files. Again, you can apply to all or specifically selected files. And over here, you can designate what serial number it's going to pull based on the extension. Now, if you want to use the same, um, if you want to get around using the same serial number for all of the same file types, you could select the files in batches and then apply only to selected files and do that multiple times to get the desired effect that you'd like. Maybe some solid parts need to be renamed using a production part serial number, while others need to be renamed using a library part serial number. So again, the way that you would apply this is you can choose to rename a serial number. In this case, I've only selected this specific one. And I'll add this and choose to rename it the library part number. And I'm going to add this in to my copy and then redo it since I didn't have it selected as a file to copy. And so it's pulling that serial number. And just like I talked about with regenerating it in the card, if you also want it to copy it to the card, you can check that option as well. So again, when you look at the serial numbers, you will have all the serial numbers in the system available to you in a dropdown. Now, when you're using PDM Copy Tree, there can be some warnings that pop up. Um, like I said, you know, you will see a yield sign. If you ever see a yield sign in PDM, it's what I call a soft warning. It allows you to continue clicking through and ignore it if you'd like. Um, if you see kind of this do not enter symbol, um, it's not going to let you continue forward until you have resolved this issue. Um, so just to go through a couple of these common warnings that you might see when you're doing copy tree. Now, right here, this is just letting you know that the file selected for copy does not have a unique file name. Now, if your file vault allows duplicates, then maybe what you have to do is just pick another folder. Because even if you allow duplicates, you can't save the same named file in a folder with the same name and extension in there as well. Now, for PDM, my recommendation for best practices is to not allow duplicates. And then in that case, for this, you would have to designate a unique file name for the files. Um, if you don't, your files won't even allow to be checked in because, again, it's following the rules of the vault, right? So if you have it set up where your vault does not allow duplicates, uh, Copy Tree is also working with those settings. Now, another warning that you might see, like I said, is file is locked, can't overwrite this file. So in this case, um, I got this warning because the file was checked out by someone else. So the file is not being selected for copy. It's only being selected as a reference. 
So if it's checked out, what copy tree is saying is that it can't overwrite that file and perform get latest. Now, since you're not copying this file, you're not actually even adding it. So it shouldn't be a problem. Um, really, it's just letting you know that it's checked out. Now, if you were trying to copy, then this would not let you go forward because it wouldn't allow you to add a new version of that file and get latest. So that is where you would want to definitely clear up and get that reference file checked in before performing your copy tree. Um, now, looking at something that's kind of a different flavor of copy tree is move tree. Move tree is a feature that is available only in PDM Pro, but it gives you the ability to rename and move entire assemblies and components while maintaining references. Now, many of you right now may use drag and drop to move files around the vault. PDM will often update those references correctly. Where you get into issues with that, though, is sometimes when you're moving an entire assembly, or maybe you're moving a file that is referenced by a lot of different assemblies. Um, what can happen when you do a drag and drop is that the database gets overwhelmed by the request and it's not updating everything where you want it. So when you go to open your files, even though you did the drag and drop, you may see issues like suppressed components or exploding mates. Um, you can use our update reference tool to help fix those, but why do that when you can use this tool to really do that for yourself? So you can choose to move the file. Again, you can move some of the components or all of the components. You can also rename the file at the same time, or you can even just rename the file. Sometimes if I just want to rename an entire assembly, sometimes people start with a concept part number or file name, and then you want to switch over. You could even just run move tree, not select any of them for move, and give them a different target file name. And what it'll do is it'll chug through, rename everything for you. And again, really the biggest benefit for copy tree and move tree is that it's built to maintain your references within the PDM vault. Unlike pack and go or save as, <clears throat> where save as is not really supported in that way. So save as may not work the way that you'd like to do it for that as well. So I'm going to switch back over. And since I'm done with this one, I'm just going to let copy and then we'll go back in and we can do a move tree and rename. So you can see that while I'm copying it, it may take a little time, but when you think about how many files that you're copying and the references that it's fixing for you, um, this alone is just a very useful tool. Again, with Copy Tree, I've even used this to only take a drawing in its reference file to make a copy of them. Because again, if you do a save as with that, um, your new drawing will reference the old model. If you use this tool, it will automatically look to the new model instead. So I'm going to let this chug through for just a moment more. Obviously, I picked a lot of files, so it's going through all of them. I probably should have picked a smaller list. But while that goes through that, You can see that right here too, underneath your tools, these will be right here where you can use them. So whether you select one file and do a tools copy tree, again, if you select just your assembly and pick the copy tree, it's going to pull up that file and all of its other reference files, including drawings. So you can get all of those at the same time.
just while this is going, I'm just thinking of some additional things to show you guys that you can do in here. You can see down here also <clears throat> when you're doing the copy tree, it's giving you a count on how many files and what types that you have. So for example, right now, I'm including drawings and it's only picking up one. <clears throat> so if you start with this and you know that you want to use drawings, you can use this as a check. Now, sometimes um, if you're going to pick include drawings, just realize that every single file in here is going to go out and grab those reference drawings. So if there's a lot of drawings, you may end up having a lot of, um, kind of a lot of time for it to update that reference tree. So that's just something to be aware of as you're becoming more comfortable with this tool. That. So now I'm going to go over to move tree. And I'm going to browse through and I will just move everything. And again, within the move tree, you have the similar transform options. So if you're taking a concept file and you want to rename it with a serial number, prefix, or suffix, you can do that again right there. And then you also have the options to include more reference files or regenerate the serial number back into the card. So right now, it's not letting me move. It's grayed out because it's still pointing to the same folder path and the same file name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. and we'll call it customer. So I'm going to select that folder. And then I'm also going to add a prefix and rename all these files. And this is the original file that I copied off of. So in this case, actually, to keep it from having duplicates, I'm going to add a suffix. Put dash CST for customer. And I'm going to apply that to all. You see it updated right there. So now I'm going to press move. And again, it may take just a few minutes. But the time that you're saving while it's doing this, um, to me, is really invaluable as a engineer because, again, this is taking things and reusing your designs. I would say, you know, some places, 90% of the time, you're taking something that you previously had and you're making a different version of it for another type of product line or customer order. One example for that is I worked somewhere that had skids. While the skids may vary a little bit in width or length, they may be just kind of a copy of the previous one that you used. So again, just going over um, back with, you know, move tree and copy tree, like I said, these are really the tools that are made for the vault and their references. Um, if you haven't been using it, I encourage you to try using it, give it a little bit of practice, and I think it'll really help increase your productivity and help maximize your use of the PDM tool. And that's everything that I have for right now. I don't know if anybody has any questions that they would like to review. Feel free to chat with us in the window, or if you just have a question, feel free to send me an email personally over at bobm at cati.com, and we will get you an answer. So thank you very much, everybody. If um, I'll hang on for a few minutes here and see if anybody has any questions, but we'd like to thank you for spending your, your hard-earned time with us this morning, and we have a presentation this afternoon. If you haven't checked it out, um, feel free to go on www.cati.com and register, and we'll have one ever, actually twice a day for the rest of the month. So thank you very much, and enjoy your day.